Also discuss the matter now, Mr. Daniel Boala, a legal practitioner and also a member of Lincoln's Inn in London, is joining me now. Well, welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, we've seen, you know, all of the activities that happened before the rejection of Mr. Mago on the floor of the Senate. I want to ask you a quick one. What is the status of Mr. Mago right now? Well, um, by law, mm -hmm. uh, he remains the acting chair, except and unless the president fires him consequent on the uh, findings of the Senate. If you look at um, Section 2 sub 3 of the EFCC Act, uh, obviously it is the president who appoints. And as it stands now, it is not the president that rejected him, it is the Senate. So he remains the appointee of the president until the president removes him. That's one. And then number two, if you look at the uh, Interpretation Act, I think Section 11, it is clear that the man who is, uh, that's the appointed authority, you know, where, where a statute confers the power to appoint someone, whether in a specific period or for a period as specified by the status, that that person will continue to act on the uh, orders of the appointing authority. So if you look at the law, there is no law as it stands now that says the rejection by the Senate automatically disqualifies Mago from acting. Uh, Mago cannot act as a substantive chair of EFCC, but Mago remains the acting chair of the EFCC unless the president thinks otherwise. How long can he continue to act for? Well, the act provides that the, a substantive chair acts for a period of four years. And unless it is renewed, after four years, he will naturally go down. So presumably, if you look at that, you can reach the conclusion that Mago can continue to act in acting capacity for a period he would have acted if he was appointed as a substantive chair of the EFCC. So he can act for four years, and then we see what, what happens from there. But you see, I hold... A different view because of the events that have happened you know uh, uh, these days i feel that the back and forth over magu is number one bringing displeasure to the populace the people and then number two the interest people have in him is going down and then number three the president has not been able to stamp his authority into my mind as far as this issue is concerned because senate merely the presidency merely played into the hands of the senate and they did what they had to do if the opportunity availed them. And, of course, the opportunity availed them since there was a conflicting report from an agency under the presidency. So having regard to the circumstances of the case, my humble opinion will be for the president to think of someone else, probably to swap him, take Margot to uh, uh, custom, and then bring the custom boss to EFCC. <laughs> With the shenanigans that has just happened recently. Mm -hmm. Well, some people might not think that's, you know, that's going to be wise, especially since uh, we've seen what has happened uh, with the customs boss and his encounter with the Senate. But let's, you know, let's talk about the procedure, you know, right. the, the activities that happened before the rejection of Mago. How, what was your assessment? Do you think that the senators were fair in their rejection of Mr. Mago? Obviously they were not. And it, it's, it's clear to everyone. First, the principle of law that you cannot be a judge in your own case, even though constitutionally it is the Senate that confirms and they must see, they must also hear uh, uh, Mago. But then the point is, if we are talking about fairness, just as you asked the question, the, there are individuals in the Senate, in fact, who have played principal role in the rejection of Magu, who are either currently under investigation by the EFCC or under prosecution by the EFCC. So principle of fairness would have demanded, and I even heard recently that the standing rules of the Senate says, if a senator in a matter that is brought before the plenary, feels that he has a pecuniary interest in the matter, he must disclose that. So if you look at that, the Senate president, the deputy Senate president, some of the former governors, you have some of the city Senate senators who are already either under investigation or are under prosecution. So where lies the issue of fairness when in the first place their initial agitation was that there was a report by EFCC which indicted him, and they stood by that. DSS. DSS. They stood by that. Mm. Then after that uh, uh, in, uh, interview or confirmation hearing, they changed their position. At least we had some of the officers of the Senate. Um, you know, yes, the Senate. They now said it was actually not that one, but that Magu did not satisfactorily respond to the questions that were put to him. There were a number of elements. Uh, right. Some people will argue differently that there were a number of elements. Mr. Magu was initially sent there. They had this DSS report, perhaps to give him some form of protection. They held a meeting behind closed doors, came out and said we had rejected him. They sent him back to the presidency. Uh, the presidency queried him. He answered the query. 
perhaps satisfactorily, but you know, the details of his uh, answer was not released until much later, and I think even that was leaked. But he was sent back by the presidency to the senators uh, you know, for confirmation a second time, even though there was argument as to whether or not he was rejected even the first time, because some people said that what the Senate did was not procedural, and we saw that you know, the uh, House leader, beg your pardon, the Senate leader was asked to step down in that, in that situation, and another leader emerged in, in, in that situation. So they eventually did hear him the, through the procedure that a lot of people are familiar with. How did the senators, you know, not carry out their duty of fairness? Thank you. If you look at, for example, borrowing from America, congressional hearing, when you look at uh, an appointee of the president appearing before probably a committee of the Congress mm -hmm. to answer questions regarding his suitability to handle the post, the number one consideration is whether he is competent enough to handle. And in most cases, these appointees were never in that position. You are appointing a freshman. And so they have to look at his resume. They have to ask him questions to see whether he has the knowledge of what he's going into. Mm -hmm. This is a different scenario. In this case, you have someone who has been in the system all these years for as long as the existence of EFCC. And then secondly, you have somebody who has acted as the acting chair of EFCC for a considerable period of time and has had and has achieved a considerable result that is in law, we say rest if salon keto, the facts speak for itself. The result of the chairman would have been a consideration during the hearing and not the eloquence of the man and not whether he answered the question in the way they wanted. Mm, but there are two issues there. Some people will say that, you know, yes, uh, you know, some people say that the fact that he served before uh, as ESCC chair, I mean, he's been in acting capacity. Mm -hmm. It's like having expo before the exam <laughs> puts it in, in, in that manner. They believe that, you know, he has been given the room to even act before he's been interviewed right. on the matter. And that when he came before the senators, he should have shone like a million stars, like uh, what? you know, answering questions. Uh, he was asked whether or not, you know, what the DSS, the DSS reports, and he said he did not know that that question was going to be posed to him, otherwise he would have come with the answer that he prepared. Now, How could he not have known? Admittedly, admittedly, on the floor of the Senate that day, his responses were not satisfactory. Admittedly, because he did not respond specifically to the questions given, or he did not give adequate answers to that. But let me tell you, congressional hearing, if we talk about fairness, some of the questions that were put to him, he stated clearly, I did not know this question was going to come. If I knew, I would have come up with probably a document or a report. Does he have any business answer. saying that? That's the question. Yeah, he has. He's, he, 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 well, the, bis the onus is on him to be as frank as possible to the senators. If there was fairness, they would adjourn that proceeding for that day because you are going into the root of the matter. You would tell them, okay, tomorrow we are sitting. Come back. They did the same to the, uh, the, the custom bowls. He appeared but not with uniform. They said, go come again. Because they wanted to be sure that the root of what they wanted to bring to the house was handled. So they would have said, okay, it seems you are not prepared. Go and come tomorrow with all the documents, with all the responses to the answer. Mm -hmm. But it's like that was exactly what they wanted, for him to fumble so they can take advantage of But that. shouldn't he have known that? 